make it very informal, so if you have any questions at any point, just let me know. You know, raise your hand or just interrupt me and we'll go over the questions. Um, I have several pictures at the end that I will try to explain without having much uh, said on them because those are the questions that mo most often I see when patients come in for procedures, okay? But we're gonna talk about uh, a very broad subject. It's very hard to condensate what pain management is in an hour or two hours or so. So I just pick and choose a bit of everything. And then if you guys need more information or you wanna know more about something in specific, just let me know, okay? So Sarah uh, already introduced me and, and I think she did a great job. So I work in the neuroscience. I've been working there for six years. I was uh, born and raised in Puerto Rico, and then I did a, an interventional uh, pain fellowship in Pittsburgh at UPMC, and then moving to Wisconsin. I always get that question, why Wisconsin from Puerto Rico? But I do like the quality of life here, and I do enjoy the seasons. I mean, once you're in the Caribbean for 30 some years, and you're 95 degrees all day long, all night long. There's no winter, you're sweating all day. You get used to I mean, you want to change. <laughs> so it's good for a, for a couple of days, it's good for a couple of weeks. I mean, vacation is very enjoyable, but an everyday deal is too much. <laughs> so I have done uh, lectures for pharmaceutical companies, including Pfizer, Sabella, and Dermatrans. We're not going to be talking specifically about any of those products today, but uh, just as a disclaimer, so you guys are aware of that. So, one part of the pain management approach is procedures or interventions. But I don't want you guys to see that as the only thing that we do to manage pain. Okay, so yes, we can do injections, and yes, it's a tiny pick, it's not such a big needle. But we have some other uh, tricks that we can use for pain, okay? So, to start with, let's de define what pain is, okay? And the most important aspect of this huge definition from the International Association for the Study of Pain is that pain is always subjective. So I need to believe what the patient tells me. I can measure with a ruler, I can measure with a test, I can measure with a lie detector. I, there's no way I can know how much pain you, you or anybody is besides what the patient tells me, okay? And being subjective also means that it's very unique to every individual. So the same type of injury that happens to uh, person number A may cause a different type of pain experience in person number B, even though it could be the same type of injury and it could look exactly the same on images. Overall, again, it's an unpleasant sensory and emotional. And the emotional component is very important. The response to pain on a patient that has no emotional distress is different than the response to pain on a patient that has some kind of emotional distress. And that comes in play when a patient suffers from depression, for example, and we can talk about that later on in the conference. And this sensation is most of the time associated with some type of damage, okay? And that is the big difference between acute and chronic pain. In the acute pain, what I tell my patients all the time, you put your hand on top of a hot stove, and if you don't take it out, you're gonna get a burn. I mean, there's gonna be tissue damage. So there's, there's a purpose for you to have acute pain. Chronic pain serves no purpose. Chronic pain is that pain that persists beyond the expected time of healing, but it's not letting you know that there's gonna be any type of injury. It's just there to make you miserable. So we need to approach that pain knowing that, knowing that it's there, it's constant, it's real, it's not that you're making it out, but it's not gonna cause permanent tissue damage or injury to yourself, okay? So once again, it's a component of both the physical and the emotional uh, uh, nature of that experience. And then it's very important, and I don't see many children, but it's very hard to ask a baby how much pain they are. So what you usually uh, rely on is what their expressions are. A baby that is smiling is very unlikely he's in pain. A baby that has a grimace in his face, then probably there's something wrong. And there's different kind of uh, faces that the nurses use, especially in the pediatric unit to know if a patient that can express themselves is in pain or not high. And this is also uh, uh, true for not just children, but any patient that has any mental uh, uh, disability that is hard for him or her to express pain, okay? So, as I already mentioned, acute and chronic, and 
And this definition is not written in stone. I mean, most, most of the time we decide that acute pain is any type of pain that has been present for less than three months, but it, it can be a little bit more, it can be a little bit less, okay? Acute pain is that pain that just happened, okay? The chronic pain is the pain that has been there beyond the expected time of healing. You go for surgery, you have post-surgical pain. Most of the time that post-surgical pain is gonna be very bad the first two weeks, but as time goes on, that should get better. If that pain persists very bad beyond the expected time of healing, which is usually about three months, then you turn out into a chronic pain state. So uh, there's other things that need to be uh, taken into account. You, know, you need to make sure that that persistent pain is not because there's something else. If you have surgery and there's persistent pain, you want to make sure that the surgical hardware is okay, that there's no infection, that there's nothing else there. Once that is ruled out, then you can use the term chronic pain. And the management of acute pain and chronic pain differs. You can manage both the same way. And the issue is that in the acute pain, you have a specific signal sent to your brain from that tissue damage. In the chronic pain, that signal is being sent to your brain, but it's not based on tissue damage. So the same type of treatment, which, for example, in acute post-surgical pain, is opioid or pain medications, will not work the same way in patients that are uh, suffering from chronic pain. So the approach to manage the chronic pain can be just injection, it can just be medications, it has to be what we call a holistic approach. So there is this term that there's a lot of controversy about that is called the breakthrough pain. Most people say, well, I'm taking too long acting medications, I need to take a breakthrough medication. You don't need to take a breakthrough, medi breakthrough pain medication. Uh, most of the studies on the use of opioids or pain medications for pain are or were done in cancer patients. So the use of this type of medications in non-cancer patients, the amount of studies is very limited. Okay, so this uh, concept of breakthrough pain is, is there, it's being discussed about, but there's a lot of controversy about it. 